Hi everybody, it's still December 28, 2017. I want to read Carl Sagan's prediction. And as I read it, you tell me if it has not come true. I have a foreboding of an America in my children's and grandchildren's time when the United States is a service and information economy, when nearly all the key manufacturing industries have slipped away to other countries when awesome technological powers are in the hands of a very few and no one representing the public interest can even grasp the issues. When the people have lost the ability to set their own agendas and knowledgeably question those in authority. When clutching our crystals and nervously consulting our horoscopes, our critical faculties in decline, unable to distinguish between what feels good and what's true, we slide, almost without noticing, back into superstition and darkness. The dumbing down of America is most evident in the slow decay of substantive content in the enormously influential media, the 30-second sound bites, now down to 10 seconds or less, lowest common denominator, programming. Credulous presentations on pseudoscience and superstition, but especially a kind of celebration of ignorance. As I write, the number one video cassette rental in America is the movie Dumb and Dumber. Beavis and Butthead remains popular and influential with young TV viewers. So, that was written decades ago. Where are we today? Living dumb and dumber. Living Beavis and Butthead. Surrounded by Americans who refuse to think, who can't critically think anymore, don't want to, it's too time consuming, and I guess they just don't have the energy for it. When you get to that point in your own country, surrounded by the majority of people that represent your country's population, nothing good can come of it. We have now been a people who actually celebrate ignorance. I want you to listen to what this ex-Soviet propagandist has to say. I will link below to everything, and I will, um, I, I'm not going to be reading articles, I'm not going to be playing the entire video, but, well, I always have this inside me, please circulate this information, please circulate this information, please circulate this information. And yet, I know that the American people no longer regard facts and evidence as anything worthy of their time. But this is what this ex-Soviet propagandist has to say. Warning Americans 30 years ago warning Americans of what was happening here in the United States 30 years ago. The other 85% is a slow process, which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, active мероприятия in the language of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process, which goes very slow and is divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students 
in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result, the result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind. Even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid of society of these people, you have you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of, the, uh, of the United States society. And yet these people have been programmed and, as you say, in place, and yes. who are favorable to an opening of the Soviet concept. Mm -hmm. These are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Uh, All right, so he talks about how, yeah, um, it's the useful idiots that go along with the programming that are eventually taken out along with the dissonance, along with those who still can critically think demoralization. The American people are demoralized. They cannot act in their own best interest. And they are unbelievably incapable of thinking outside the box and standing on their own as an individual. It's that herd mentality that goes along to get along and worships authority as if they are children still growing up in a toxic dysfunctional environment with toxic and dysfunctional parents but they have to look at their parents as if they're gods because they're children and they realize perhaps not consciously they certainly can't articulate it yet because they don't have the, the, the kind of cognitive faculties that allow them to articulate it yet but they know that their survival depends on those parents no matter how incredibly crazy dysfunctional even cruel they are. They have to look at their parents as if they're gods. And then they internalize a message that says, well, if they're gods and they're telling me I've done something wrong, that means I have. They've internalized within themselves this, I'm, I'm wrong, I'm bad. And unless the adult works all of that stuff through, that childlike thinking and emotionality is still within them. That's why we have an awful lot of adult children who cannot act responsibly and who submit and comply with authority because authority figures that's mommy and daddy. They go along with mommy and daddy. And mommy and daddy, well, law enforcement, any kind of authority figure, professors, uh, doctors, police, mainstream media, reporters, 
or even their authority figures, but all government officials, whether local, state, or federal, certainly the President of the United States, our senators, our representatives in Congress. They have become the incredibly crazy, dysfunctional, and cruel mommy and daddy for the American people to go along with. That's why one of the reasons why so many Americans simply do not have what it takes. They don't have the courage to stand up for what is right. They can only comply with the orders from their authority figures. So, citizen pedophile hunter arrested for catching child predators? Better than police. Rich Warner. He was profiling, I guess on the internet, to catch predators. Child predators. And he was actually pretty successful. So, he caught a repeat offender. And what he does is... He does like a citizen arrest. Citizen arrests are constitutional. They're, they were okay, but, well, many citizens don't have the courage to do this. So he made a citizen arrest, and he turns over the child predator to the police. But he got arrested because the police had to issue a very, a very firm warning to all of us. You cannot, you cannot do this. You cannot take matters into your own hands. You cannot do what we're going to tell you that you should do, which is um, turn over what you have to the police. And these headlines certainly show that we have been living in a police state for a long time, but it has become now cemented. And how does that happen? It happens when you have a people that do not know how to act in their own best interest. They do not know how to protect their individual freedoms. They do not know how to protect their own rights as an individual. They let authority handle it. So an alternative uh, media journalist who had a Facebook page, she had 84,000 um, Facebook friends or whatever. Well, she broke a story before a local news, so she was arrested, charged with felonies. You cannot do this because you are taking into you your own hands what authority figures are supposed to do. So here, this woman had an alternative media platform on Facebook. She reported on a Border Patrol agent's suicide last April and denies having done anything illegal. She didn't disclose any state secrets. No one was harmed. She simply reported on something that the authorities had not yet reported on. So she then is arrested, charged with felonies. This is our free country. Department of Homeland Security announces program to illegally scan our faces, and we pay for it. We pay for it. Both Congress and the Department of Homeland Security have never justified the biometric scanners at airports that could cost Americans $1 billion in 2018. Well, these biometric scanners are law enforcement, local law enforcement is using this technology. We pay for it. We're paying for our own demise. It, it has become so obvious now that when you see Americans not caring, not doing anything about it, 
you recognize somebody who has been so demoralized they don't know what's up or down. They can't act in their own best interest. They're only for the moment. Let me be happy and let me only think about my little life. It's so sad to see this. Cops shoot and kill mentally ill blind man in his own apartment Christmas night. A SWAT team raided the home of a mentally ill blind man. During the raid, two officers opened, fired, and killed him. How often have we seen articles like this throughout the years? Why do we continue to see this? Because the American people in these communities do nothing. Do nothing. Intelligence contractor, CIA director says World War III begins in 12 weeks. Yes, an intelligence insider has just claimed that director of CIA, Mike Pompeo, told him to expect war with North Korea in 12 weeks, which would kick off World War III. Now, these anonymous sources, I never put much stock in them. But when you see these kinds of headlines, you would think that Americans would be talking about this. Well, they might be talking about North Korea because, well, that's what mainstream media has been reporting on. And would they be interested in doing any further research to find out that what mainstream media has been doing is reporting propaganda? That mainstream media is the propaganda arm of our government. They report, they don't investigate, they report what government officials want them to report. It's all propaganda, it's all lies. But what do we see? We see Americans getting oh so scared. Oh my God, North Korea. And this guy is crazy, he's crazy. They don't understand. I, I heard somebody say a while ago that North Korea is the puppet of our CIA. Well, <laughs> uh, based on my research regarding our relations with North Korea, yeah, the access of evil, how it always kind of just pops up periodically. North Korea, crazy, crazy leaders in North Korea. They wouldn't have the nuclear bomb if we didn't give them uh, the uh, give them the uh, the ingredients and and the way to make it. The ingredients, like they're cooking a cake, but baking a cake. Um, North Korea would never be North Korea if we didn't want North Korea to be North Korea. We have to have these countries to, yeah, bring up periodically, incite fear in the American people. Oh my God, now, now North Korea has these missiles that can, that can reach anywhere in the United States. Wow, that was quick because it was only, you know, a couple of months ago that I read this article from an expert saying they, they don't have any missiles that could reach the United States. Okay, but the latest mainstream media article that I saw just a couple of days ago, North Korea now has a missile that can reach anywhere on the mainland United States. Well, I would think that it could also reach Hawaii. So why, why just say the mainland? Um, it, it's so, God, the idiocy, you know, the dumb and dumber <laughs> country that we're now living in has become so obvious. Well, you know, when you have the dumb and dumber, <laughs> you get a lunatic asylum. Cop who murdered innocent child riding an ATV had a trigger happy history but was never fired. You look at the past record of this officer, a massive failure of accountability? Really? 
is it? It's a massive failure of the ordinary American people, their accountability. But we know that our police are now just trained killers for, for those who are taking over our country. They don't work for us. We pay their salaries. We're the schmucks who pay their salaries. But they don't work for us. They work for the deep state, the shadow government, that is really, it's been exposed for years, but you still have Americans believing that they actually have this legitimate government. How is it possible? How is it possible? You take a look at all of the articles. Lawsuit seeks to force disclosure of Trump administration's secret kill list. Oh my God, Trump, he has a secret kill list? But you have these Trump supporters saying, oh, he's different. Really? Is he different? No, he's not different. He's not different at all. He is... 2017, the banner year for the military-industrial complex. Trump administration? Yeah. Military complex? All of our military contractors, Raytheon, they got more money under Trump than anybody else. Than anybody else. And Trump, man, this guy, he has killed more. Just this past year, more innocent civilians with his drone strikes than Obama did in his eight years. Do you hear that? Did you hear that? But he's going to save the day? What has made America's inner, city, inner cities into a violent war zone? Americans don't know that crime is used to control them. They don't know that they allow these inner cities to become so violent and then you hear from a government official in Chicago who says we it's out of hand it's out of hand our police can't ha handle it so we're we're going to have to call in the united nations the peacekeepers no the police could handle it they don't handle it deliberately and you know something? If anybody gets a war with Iran, it'll be Trump. And there we were, all fighting with, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't, but Americans. Hillary, the Trump supporters, Hillary will bring us to war with Iran. Hmm. Divide and conquer. While the plans remain the same. But you have an awful lot of Americans who have that thinking. Trump is going to save the day. I saw it with the liberal progressive crowd. Obama comes in. Eight years before Obama, we were all wanting Bush Cheney to be hung, screaming about their lies. Obama comes in. He maintains status quo. He's lying through his teeth. He's killing innocent people. But the liberal progressives, oh, they don't care. Because truth is not their guiding principle. It's daddy who's in the White House. So Obama was celebrated for eight years because these people are not about truth. They're only about their team. Dumb and dumber, Beavis and Butthead. So, on the right, on the left. You got Beavis on the right, you got Butthead on the left. And because 
we have so many people who really are, they have no principles that guide them. So they worship their teams. <laughs> so we have eight years of Obama. Now we have a year of Trump. We've got all these Trump supporters. Everything that they were arguing prior to the election, arguing what Hillary was going to do, it may very well be Trump who, pull, who pulls it off. And this is the saddest. The death of academic freedom, Professor James Tracy denied First Amendment rights by federal court. He lost his case. A jury, a jury voted unanimously for Florida Atlantic University, where James Tracy was a tenured professor. This happened December 11th. A jury in West Palm Beach, Florida, ruled unanimously in favor of authority and against former media studies professor James Tracy, who was suing for reinstatement after his firing in 2016. The jury found that Tracy's controversial articles on his Memory Hole blog those articles about Sandy Hook. The jury found those articles were not a motivating factor in his firing. The only question they were required to consider. And yet the case centered around Tracy's writings on the anomalies found in the reporting on the Sandy Hook massacre, December 14, 2012. How could it be? How could it be when you have an awful lot of Americans that sit on juries that don't believe in freedom anymore, that are loyal to the state, they vote in favor of the state. And Florida Atlantic University's attorney said this, Professor Tracy doesn't follow rules. There are rules that everyone else follows, but he doesn't play by the rules. He cast Professor James Tracy as belligerent, rebellious, non-conformist. He was let go for insubor insubordination instead of that of a tenured professor exercising his right to free speech. Americans don't even know what free speech is. They don't, they don't have any basis of knowledge of their own rights. They, 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 they're clueless. They're dumb and dumber. They're Beavis and Butthead. So Tracy and other professors at Florida Atlantic University had argued that the policy of the institution, which was to submit forms prior to doing any kind of outside activity, to be vetted for administrative approval. That's right. Well, all of these professors at Florida Atlantic University should confront the administration at this college, at this university, and demand, especially for tenured universities or any, it doesn't matter, tenured or not. They should be allowed to, to engage in whatever kind of outside activity they want to without seeking the approval of authority. 
But that's the way it rolls now in the United States. You have to get approval for everything from authority figures first. Children, how dare you set up a lemonade stand without getting the approval of your town council authority. It's sickening. But professors had argued that it was vague and confusing, constituting a form of prior restraint forbidden by the First Amendment and leading to a climate of fear and uncertainty among the faculty. So, James Tracy has been destroyed for writing about Sandy Hook. But we can't get Americans to even look into what happened at Sandy Hook, right? So, they are absolutely complicit in the destruction of our own rights, the right of James Tracy to exercise his freedom of speech and to question. I mean, here he was, a, um, a media studies professor, a media studies professor. And many of the articles that he posted on Memory Hall, his blog, were directly related to questioning the media and how they were reporting on Sandy Hook. But you have a jury of James Tracy's peers now. You've got Beavis and Butthead jury members going along with authority. And what does that mean for their own freedom of speech? They, because they do not know how to act in the best interest of their own individual freedoms and their own rights as individuals, they deny this man his rights, and effectively, they deny their own right to freedom and freedom of speech. It is pretty sickening to see this. Five things professors actually said in 2017. Most Americans expect college professors to be beacons of knowledge and wisdom, or at least to exercise more maturity than their teenage students. Campus reform, which I had recommended everybody bookmark and just take a look at these articles that are coming up on campus reform, and you will see that our university, our college, uh, the whole institution has been taken over by Beavis and Butthead, Dumb and Dumber. So campus reform comes across professors who unashamedly make outrageous, preposterous, and downright absurd remarks in their classrooms and on social media denigrating conservatives and their viewpoints like a professor suggested Texans deserved Hurricane, Hurricane Harvey for supporting Trump, or a professor said House GOP should be lined up and shot, professor calls whites in human assholes, and says, let them die. Another professor said that Otto Warm, uh, Warm Bear, Bear, Warm Bear, I don't know. Uh, well, I, there was a, an American, a young American, who died after being held in a North Korean prison camp. And he said he got exactly what he deserved. And a Drexel professor blames whiteness for the Texas massacre. Whiteness. Whiteness is never seen as a cause and in and of itself of these kinds of massacres of other forms of violence. Yeah, an interview on Democracy Now! Amy Goodman. So the interviewee said 
that whiteness is a structure of privilege and it's structure of power and a structure that when it feels threatened, you know, it lashes out and kills 26 people. So all of these professors retained their jobs. James Tracy <laughs> for doing his job as a media studies professor is destroyed because he questioned Sandy Hook. So what all of this how did all of this manifest? What how did we how how have we suddenly uh, manifested a country in which is so foreign to so many of us. The herd mind. The state is a, is a state of mind. The state is a state of mind. It is a herd mindset. The state is a certain orientation of a whole people, a spiritual phenomenon pervading an entire populace that animates and empowers such a ruling body. Government is the idea of the state put into practical operation in the hands of definite, concrete, fallible men. It is the visible sign of the invisible grace. It is the word made flesh. And it has necessarily the limitations inherent in all practicality. Government is the only form in which we can invest it is. Invest it is. My God. I'm beavis or butthead right now. But it is by no means identical with it. That the state is a mystical conception is something that must never be forgotten. Its glamour and its significance linger behind the framework of government and direct its activities The people will, when in a state of war, not a state of peace, but we've been in a state of war continuously since 9-11, and it's all a lie, the people will proceed to allow themselves to be regimented, coerced, deranged in all the environments of their lives, and turned into a solid manufactory of destruction toward whatever other people may have in the appointed scheme of things come within the range of the government's disappropriation. The citizen throws off his contempt and indifference to government, identifies himself with its purpose, revives all his military memories and symbols, and the state once more walks an August presence through the imaginations of men. Yes, the herd is mobilized, not only against the foreign foe, but against any dissidents within the group who resist assimilation into the Borg-like hive or herd mind, and who refuse to join the swarm or stampede into war. In other words, against enemies, foreign and domestic. And that's what that jury did to James Tracy. Turning humans into Pavlov dogs. Pavlov's dogs. Yeah, classical conditioning. Bully pulpits. Bully pulpitism is a very effective brainwashing method. When believers attend church, they are not allowed to speak or express their minds. Even when the preacher spews out false dogmas, they are trained to passively sit in the pews and to robotically say amen. They are thus perfectly molded to accept anything a mortal or an fallible man says as long as he happens to stand behind a pulpit. Consequently, 
From a spiritual perspective, the body of Christ suffers a debilitating paralysis. Hence, politicians have not only arrogated bully pulpitism, they have perfected it to such a degree that authoritarianism is becoming the norm almost everywhere. That's why presidents, congressmen, politicians, and public servants of all stripes act all indignant whenever people question their actions or their stands on the issues. How dare the sheeple talk back to us? They're supposed to stay quiet and acquiesce with just amen. Amen is what you are to bark. The political practice of bully pulpitism has become so bad that the people's representatives even vote against the will of the people they supposedly represent, not feigning so much as a modicum of care for the wishes of their constituents. Said disposition has even trickled down to cops who have turned savagely wild on those they have sworn to protect and serve. To further cement the process, these government rascals, no, these government, sick, twisted, psychopaths in cahoots with the medical community have engineered a solution for those who dare think for themselves and question authority. Yes, we are mentally ill. And in reality, such a dubious scientific diagnosis should have been expected. It wasn't long ago that these whorish pseudoscientists incisively concluded that two-year-olds who naturally act out suffer from oppositional defiant disorder? It must be that behind their own pulpit of make-believe or make-disease anti-authoritarianism as a sickness is a natural extension or progression of that invented kitty disorder. Children diagnosed. We have infants diagnosed with bipolar today. And the parents go along with it because they too have never grown up, have never matured. Their children listening to their daddy or mommy wearing that white coat. Tell them. Tell them what is true about their own child because they don't know themselves. We allow other people to tell us who we are, what we are going through, our life experience, because we don't know what it is. So the only way out of this, the only way out is for individuals to do the work necessary to reclaim their own power, their own minds, to think for themselves, and to be their own authority. What are the chances of that? When you have adults who behave like children, who only want to go out and play, All links are below.